Morning traders, welcome back. So I definitely left quite a bit of profits on the table today. After the market opened, I only gave back profits. It was so frustrating, but the good news is I'm ending the day green and I'm back above $120,000 in profits. So we're nicely on our journey to hit that $150,000 milestone. And I only traded three tickers today, which is nice. I love when I only trade three tickers or less than that. It's, it's refreshing. Yesterday I traded six and I've been trading six plus a lot lately and that's just not really what I want to be doing. Um, FFIE is the only ticker that I just did like a scratch trade on and then I just moved on. Um, so let's just review from the low to the top. I'm up 509 today, but like I said, I could have done a lot better. So let's see where I made the mistakes. Then we'll dive into my running PL charts and my statistics a little bit more to get some fresh new insights. So FFIE, where is that one? Look at that, it's not even on the scanners anymore because that's how bad this ticker was. Going to FFIE on the charts, you'll see here the daily is a disaster with really low volume and then five minute chart looks like someone just vomited on the screen and then the one minute chart also looks like that, um, but even worse. So I actually ended up taking this pullback. It kept on selling off and I just closed for a loss. Yeah, I don't know. This ticker was a disaster. It's not even worth talking about. Good thing I did small size. That was really important. I'm super happy I did small size because it was still like a 2.5% loss, believe it or not. But the size was so small that it really didn't matter. And then AY... LA pops up. Actually, this is the first ticker that popped up when I was trading. And this is the one I left a lot of profits on the table by not getting aggressive after the market opened on it. I was watching it pretty much the whole time, but I wasn't trading it. And I think one of my problems was I was switching between tickers a lot. I was watching AYLA. I was watching FRGT. I was watching specifically USEA for a while. Another one I should have traded, but I didn't. And I, I, it feels like after the market opened, I wasn't focused anymore and it was a little stressful. But yeah, whatever. AYLA, let's look at this one. Daily chart right here. Big, big, big move. High relative volume. Super beautiful. We broke through a lot of resistance zones, and I would thought we would maybe see a move all the way to like 3.5. Um, but this rejection here really put a nail in the, the coffin of continuation today for AYLA. So I don't know if we're going to get some more momentum out of it. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. If it holds $2, maybe it's going to be midday or late day run because on the five minute, it actually doesn't look that bad. I'm um, talking about the five minute. Let's see how this one popped up. So let me inch this one along and boom, boom, boom. So nice little pre-market move here, consolidation. And then, you know, start, TOS starts at 7 a.m. pre-market. So I traded it a little bit in this area. This was not good trading. wasn't really anything that exciting, um, but I avoided some kind of pitfalls there for sure. It wasn't until the market opened that this one really got interesting. And I traded, let's see here, there was a nice VWAP breakout, perfect five minute setup here, five minute breakout, one minute pullback going on right here. I traded this one, I actually ended up taking a loser here because I bought near the low, it popped up, I was ready for that continuation and it sold off right again. I just kind of cut my losses this on this one. I'm working on cutting my losses a little quicker. I actually don't mind how I traded this one, but I should have bought back. That's really where I messed up. I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. Yeah, so that's where I messed up. I didn't buy back quick enough and I unfortunately missed this whole run here. And I was chasing this whole entire time. I was buying here, I was buying, or I was trying to buy here, buying, trying to buy here. And I was always like a hair too low. Uh, on my entry, like literally one cent off every time. Kind of kind of frustrating, I gotta say, but uh, I should have got more aggressive. I just, you know, I've been on a little bit of a red streak, so I, I haven't been feeling that aggression uh, internally, and also the market hasn't been that great based on my uh, front side trading strategy, so it's, you know, I, I had a hard time really jumping on this one. I actually ended up performing really nice. This was like a 40% move. I ended up trading this pullback, uh, but again, finally I bought too soon, and I basically closed here for break even. And then again, right here, there's a pop. I had a limit order somewhere here. I literally missed it again by a cent. It starts moving up and I press um, Alt Q, which is basically buy the ask, which basically means instant ex execution, typically. Now, in this case, it went up so fast that I tried Alt Q four times. I was like here, 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 and then here. And then, you know, once it broke two, four, I was like, I'm not chasing it. Plus at this point it was like, uh, uh, it was right like 50 more seconds into the minute or like 10 more seconds into the minute. So it was like 9.58 and 50 seconds. And I was like, there's a good chance it's gonna be a Colby shake and it's gonna be a bull trap and it's just gonna flush. And I actually did end up doing that. So my intention was to buy here and then sell into a breakout over the former high. Uh, it definitely would have worked. I know Tom got it, so you know, hats off to you. That was an amazing trade. Unfortunately, somehow I just didn't get my fill on it. I could have maybe done market, but it's also not my favorite way to go about things. Um, so I just missed AYLA there. You could size in and then 
hope for the pot. But what I think would have been a little bit more real in terms of my trading strategy is just buying high into these breakouts. That's really where I dropped the ball on AYLA and um, right here in this area too. So I could have made more profits on this one. I could have at least walked away with maybe like four or $500 if I just got like two decent little base hit trades. Basically all I have on AYLA are my pre-market um, scratches. And then FRGT, which was a really intense ticker pre-market, but then the market opened and this ticker was like the disappointment of the century. We had this blue sky setup move over here. Although I heard there's more to this chart than on TOS. I'm not totally sure. I didn't check myself yet, but that's fine. Um, I was really just kind of focused here on this area. I did like the fact that, you know, the five minute here had a good move and then there was consolidation. I was looking for that second rally and we pretty much got a lot of that. So this ticker wasn't too bad to trade. I should have been a little bit more quick here in this area pre-market, um, jumping in on it a bit sooner, but the volume was always pretty light. So again, it was kind of hard wanting to jump in super aggressive on these tickers today. Then that last home stretch before the market opened from like nine to 9.30, we had a few opportunities. I think they're really the best opportunity was like in this area um, actually had a similar strong pullback right here in this area compared to a y l a before a quick pop um, nice little one minute pullback here. I actually missed this one. Then I did a small trade at the market open. Today was a day where I had not like, I didn't have one really good trade. I had no trade where I made just like 500 or $1,000. Those are like nice solid trades. Today was just like a bunch of scratch trades. And luckily for the most part, they worked out. And if you see my running PL, you'll actually see that where I had no really big winners. Even this, you know, move here was a several trades. But it was nice because I just never gave back that much profit either. So I always cut my losses really quick and and I didn't have any losers with really, really big size uh, like yesterday. Like yesterday was really frustrating, constantly giving back uh, a bunch of profits. In terms of my stats today, what I did really, really well is the risk reward is positive. You guys know I usually have a negative risk reward, so I love days where it's positive. My winning ratio is a little bit lower than usual. My average is 66%, but that's fine. I don't care so much about improving my win ratio. I don't really care what that is as long as I've I have good risk reward. And for a scalping strategy like the one I'm using, you know, a one to one risk reward is pretty good. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get much better than that, but it really shouldn't be negative. So that's what I've been putting a lot of focus on lately and I think it's working well. And here you can see, I didn't really get back that much profit. It's a $69 profit margin is pretty solid. So yeah, pretty okay. I didn't size maybe as aggressively as I could have. I had a few $10,000 trades, but in general, my trades were probably below 5,000. Yeah, 4.5 thousand average position cost, which is fine. I was testing the waters a lot today and I was a little bit scattered. You know, I didn't have that one clear lead gapper where I put all my energy into. That's usually where my average position cost gets like towards $10,000 because by the end of trading that one, I'm trading it with like $20,000 position size. So those are really the ones I start edging into. Plus it's summer and uh, yeah. Remember guys, if you wanna get my checklist on what I look for pre-market, you can get it right here. I'll link it somewhere at the top. It's tradejournal.co forward slash start. I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. Like always, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.